very well be their last opportunity. Their map pick in Fraction, they looked good on it last week, but now against a strong opponent in Exet, who gets to start on their choice of that defensive side. This one, bound to be tough. Yeah, I think this is the next couple of maps. Maps the desk talked about it at the start of the show, saying Asuna has actually played more Rays than he has the Jet since this team's been put together because they have been playing Fracture, they have been playing Split. So this looks nice, right? It's Asuna on something that he has performed better on uh, than in previous maps. So it, this is, I think, full strength, 100 Thieves, and okay, there it is. Nice setup there. Grab well, to lock Cryo in place, and Zekin, Asuna's counterpart, right, are kind of our head-to-head, -head and raise to raise. He's taken down as well. This pistol going swimmingly for 100 Thieves. Ooh, but Def does fight back in, so a possibility in this retake. There's still plentiful utility up for BCJ, only his stun on the recharge. And space already garnered here. They're going to try and flank this one out through main and the door. It's bound to be bang to deny. Ooh, and the frenzy's good for two. Bang, just mows him down. Asuna follows in 100 Thieves. Welcome to the server. Welcome to the series. They completely forget about their flub on Breeze and they look to take it clean into the next map. They take the pistol. Well, the desk was asking if we were going to see that same step up from Bang on this map, and well, there's your answer. Nice and early on, does a great job of containment on this flank, and even earlier in towards this round. I love quick pace, uh, kind of early extremity control on a map like this, and that's exactly what happened. A main was taken care of almost immediately, and with very little pressure on the other side of the map, there is an inherent risk to that setup if you get stalled whatsoever, but they didn't. It was fast, it was furious, and well, again, this utility is well set up. That gamer just forced to teleport on away. Is the A site, again, compromised? Yeah, Cryo able to do uh, his dance moves. I don't know what you want to call it, but he was able to dance around the fault line, the Nova Pulse, the grab. Well, finds a, a safe corner. Unfortunately, doesn't quite find the kill. I think notably about that, though, is Asuna broke the rendezvous, so you weren't able to recall that. So that cooldown, that setup is going to be just a bit longer for that defending, but X set. Okay, here we go. They want to tie us up a blast pack to hop up top side. Austin is still here to spray down two paint shells of his own. Those are going to go out and try and clear things out and slow down a push as the spike is planted for them. There's a smoke right on top. The aftershock to look to delay. BCJ can't really find himself in the fight and Zekin worse for wear as well. Boombot, that goes wide. BCJ will fall and there's just no time, no space as he goes. Sprays down three. The anti-eco, the way of 100 Thieves, but Xset made it hurt. Yeah, I actually really like this setup as a pistol round strategy because it, it relies on pace, it, it, it relies on that ferocity, and it, it works really well in, in both of these rounds, and that's because Exit is not putting a huge emphasis on their drop presence, right? A, a lot of teams, especially when I think about this game versus LG for, for 100D, there was a, an emphasis on that area of the map. That was something that was constantly being contested. For Exit, they haven't put much towards that part of the map just yet, so that a main hit, which is only coming from one side, hasn't been punished. I Imagine, though, if, heck, if 100 Thieves go back to that setup, they will change it once we are on the rifles, as they are applying some pressure yet again in this area of the map. But notice this time, to set up off that breach, there is also a swing available from the chamber, and 100 Thieves successfully dispelled, at least for the moment. A good utility bought away by 100 Thieves. Now they have to try and win the fight, and Cryo able to sneak away to safety. That spike's still down, so 100 Thieves still weighing their options as to where they would like to end up here on Fracture. Eco working hand in hand with JC Stani, trying to get something out towards the B site, and it's nothing to be had. Exit. They don't want to give it up just yet. The bonus round, two rifles, three specters for 100 Thieves. So maybe we see a little bit of that silly run and gun coming deeper in the round, but we're just under a minute. 100 Thieves, they're going to have to make a decision here soon, and they haven't got a whole lot outside of the aftershock, and now the TP is going to be back up, right? That fault line to be available, Xset really have all the tools to work with to try and stop a push here. Tools in the toolkit. Let's see what they can build with it. 100 Thieves will again be claiming the space in ports A main. Flash through. That's now this given away. Xset will come fast with the rotations, but Cryo is isolated. BCJ, though, no buys time only for a moment. Asuna stunned up, and he finds another. Asuna riding all of 100 Thieves' wrongs from map one here in map two. Big kills from the Rays. He was stunned left. by the fault line, and he two taps BCJ. Maybe one taps because of the, the close angle, but BCJ falls to one bullet, and the paint shells are going to be enough 
to sit down the stars. JC Sonny's also fallen at Tico to try and clutch things out. Clutches like this have gone amiss. Maybe this time, Viper can do something different. Takes down the first, needs to find the next, but it's second to win it out. It's the buy round going the way of Xset. Nothing doing for Hiko in this one. Still, the damage was significant, and getting the spike plant down there is honestly excellent for a bonus round out of 100 thieves. Uh, it's again that, that heavy presence on A main for the early hits, but this time it was kind of BCJ <laughs> doing some heroics, even though he got immediately killed out of Asuna and Asuna was able to open with two. It's a matter of buying time for these rotations. There was never an opportunity for 100 Thieves to get comfortable in the post plant, and Asuna's mm -hmm. uh, positioning was indicative of that. He was still trapped out in the open, one nade enough to take him on down, and from then on out, retake was looking pretty easy for the side of X at both halves now, or, or both teams, will be a bit scuffed in the buy department, so this round could be a pivotal swing as it's pressure towards the B site instead early from XZEP, but it goes awry. Death is down and there's no trade coming for it until Zekin just charges forward. Uh, this dish presence, or, or the lack thereof from 100 Thieves, is finally punished. Yeah, the extremity control is so important. You see that crunch coming from the A site. It does find the trade as the Vipers are just the around the corner from one another. And Aaron is actually not spotted. Hiko spots it too late. Asuna forced to use the showstopper to secure that kill. So we go back and forth one for one again. And three remain for both of these teams. The spike is planted, so it's X set's duty to find their way onto the site and look to get that defuse. Zekin has a showstopper of his own. Could prove to be pivotal as it comes through. What can he find? Asuna falls. Zekin can go up on top of the tower, and he's not even needed. BCJ and Cryo cut down the two remaining. They'll tie us up at twos. The pinch there is so excellent on the retake out of X set. It's like a vice. One side, you have that showstopper. You hear the rays playing around with the satchels. You know you cannot go to that side of the heaven. So instead, you try and swing back out on towards the site. But two players from X set there primed and able to shut on down. Good job on the retake to the side of X set. They'll win that critical swing round and put their economic standing in a pretty good position here as 100 Thieves will be forced down to the half by. That is, that's just perfect right there. Uh, just the, the most raw 2v2 gun battle that you're going to see. And it goes the way of Xset, more specifically Cryo play. and BCJ. A huge round to win, full reset, but we do have a tour de force online. And I know Van Silly be cursing me for pronouncing it the way that I do, but tour de force is, uh, is all 100 Thieves have to work with. Yeah, not too much in this round. In the chaos of the previous, I almost forgot Zekin was finally the one to, to exploit dish control. So this time, 100 Thieves will put pressure towards the side of the map. But because this is the first round they've sent uh, any players uh, in towards this direction, they were unaware uh, of that chamber trip. It will be broken, so information going both ways. Time bought, but space gain. This one is set up for a split on towards the A site. Pressure applied here for Aaron and Death. Spots ahead. Would have, oh, just narrowly missed him, but he goes back to it. He's 50% on the shots. Fortunately, that's enough to bag the kill. Snakebite gonna try and keep Aaron safe for now. Aftershock doesn't quite land, and it does a grab well. And Asuna's on top of the site. He's got the spike now with that defeat of Aaron, but the kills are starting to swing their way through. The Tour de Force and the Sheriff gonna pick up a couple as Bang finds two with the Sheriff. 800 credit weapon. Two huge kills, a Viper's Pit, and three players in front of him as Cryo, Tour de Force in hand. Needs to try and somehow, some way, clutch this round. And that's one of the worst weapons to have. Pushing on into the pit. Now he's got a Vandal. A couple of members chipped away for 100 Thieves. Bang. And a spot on first will take him down. It's low HP, but it's plenty for 100 Thieves to secure the round. Just enough. Three to two now. Lead swings back in the favor of 100 Thieves. And, well, it was that dish present presence again. Being fickle. Both these teams not putting the biggest emphasis on it. This time, Under Thieves claim that space and have a fantastic split in towards the site. Exet surprisingly late on the rotations, not wanting to overcommit on into that, which meant that once the head was spotted for death, he was isolated. That's a really risky angle to play as an Astra. And sure, it's in an anti-eco, but there was a tour de force there, and the punishment was quick to come on through. That's a massive one for 100 Thieves to find, but at least for Exet, you can count your blessings that money is still available and that a proper operator is now in the hands of Cryo. Oh, 
alt line. Oh no. Gonna be a flash instead. Shoot up. Austin not looking to clear top rope with the paint shells. And he does so successfully. But with that door closing, that's an angle that you're gonna have to re-clear, right? Somebody had could have now assumed that position as JC Stani able to back away. Nebula smoke providing the concealment to do so. So the A site seems to be the final destination here for 100 Thieves, and there's nobody directly on it. There's Viper Utility. There's also a trademark just on the other side. Give this one up. So now the cat's out of the bag, but 100 Thieves yet to commit. So here we go, though. Rolling Thunder, look at the alts used as we go out towards the site. It's a cosmic divide to make sure nobody sprays on through. It's a free plant. It's a safe plant. It's 100 Thieves to get the spike down and look to hang on. 30 seconds left. What's available for this oh. retake while I'm rolling thunder? It's already queued up for BCJ, and notice where Zekin is. He has blast packs, so he can claim space immediately off of that, and even a nade to follow up. Oh. He attempted, but Aaron falls, so Zekin immediately the one to come back with the trades, and a low HP player is easy to grab for Zekin. BCJ adds on in, so now Ethan alone. He was far back, he was holding the flank, not worried about the spike proper, and will Cryo will just hold on to the defuse as Def denies the final player, and Xset take a clean round. BCJ CJ's rolling thunder and Zekin's just fragging prowess to take it. Yeah, a good take, but an even better retake for Exit. Like you said, the fragging prowess from Zekin. He found the third kill on Austin and he had six health or something of the sort. Sure, both of them were low, but a pivotal duel uh, with Austin is still alive. It gives Ethan a bit more time to, you know, try and help that team out and yeah. stop things. I'm wondering about the, the plant position and how much it could have been seen from a main right mm. because they opted out of planting into that deep corner and behind that radionite box unfortunately we didn't get to see that really come to fruition because ethan didn't get to take a peek at the angle but either way we're tied up once more op shot from cryo go wide that one doesn't land but at the very least they know where that op is playing and they look can look to play elsewhere as they're fighting or the orbs no alt Online just yet. Nobody really even close outside of Austin. He's just about halfway and looking to go quick. Paint shells up in the tower. Gonna be slowed down. I am Nebula and Zekin's playing on the inside. He's playing with fire here, but the reloads bang. Fortunately, the bail is teammate out as they push on up to the side. Def and BCJ go huge. It's Def for three. Now Hiko needs to match. There's two more just on the other side. Gonna be a tight angle. Def will fall. Hiko. I don't want to say he's healthy because he's armorless, but he's got 100 HP. He's got a phantom and the spike in hand is a wall. We'll delay for just a second. Cryo looks to creep on over and it's still that operator in the hands of Cryo in the hands of the chamber. And we've seen how that duel goes or went before. Now he goes 35 seconds to make a play. He clears lots of space out towards arcade. So feels safe working his way towards the site, but Cryo has inched up. Smoke will allow the spike at least to come down, but Cryo an opportunity to close the gap. Tap on the spike. Does the spate the peak? It absolutely does for the whip! No, he goes flubbed it! The opportunity laying in his hands and it just slips away. Oh my Oh no. It, it, since the then since the birth of Valorant, there has not been another moment that you wish you could have back. I don't care where you go, you could scour the depths of all the clips. That is the moment. I feel that you just wish you could have back through my whole yeah. body. Oh my god, that uh, it was free. He missed the shot. That is painful. <laughs> but I suppose it's also an example of how good that chamber can be. Quick draw time. Fastest cowboy in the West is Cryo to save that round. Unholsters the headhunter and goes to it. Ooh, nice rendezvous to get away, but they're not safe just yet. Bang will fall in Zekin. Blast pack to safety. Gets a little body blocked by his teammate, but at the end of the day, a one for none in favor of Vexa. And that last round swung them the lead. This one, they're just a bit closer to a two-round lead. As JC Stani tucked in this B main corner. That's a scary spot to play. A lot of utility usually chucked out that way, but he hangs on. Stay alive. He puts the stars down and 100 Thieves. Well, he's got the team right behind him. It's Hiko across the map. The Nebula smokes to pop on up. Asuna can assume position on the site. And nobody's there, right there to stop him, slow him down, or answer for it. So the spike should be planted, but still a player advantage here in the retake. The fault line stuns things up. Asuna really has nowhere to go. Three players on the tower side of the map. Slowly but surely, Ethan going to be making his way here. Stani will find the first. The op shots, well, they land again. This time, Cryo refuses to miss. And Asuna 
will fall and the player advantage still in hand of the defense just on the other side of the smoke though and on the inside goes second hiko gonna take him down looking to right his wrongs but it's a one for one it's still players for exit as they look to hop onto the spike the up shot goes wide the headhunter is there and around the corner is ethan he was the last one standing and he wasn't enough it's exit to five dude crowd just keeps whiffing the up shot somehow pulling out the headhunter <laughs> and still winning these rounds uh, exit it gets a little risky in the end there but it, i feel like they actually had that well contained from the beginning uh hiko going one for one that was the point where the round tips in favor of the defenders. If he had been able to stay alive, maintain pressure towards the arcade side of the map, then it would have been tougher. But instead, with him dying, there was only two angles to worry about. Both those players were already known. The op was holding for Stani, and well, maybe it missed out. Maybe things got a little bit messy. It will still be Exet to hold on in that round as 100 Thieves will just be forced down onto the save here. A showstopper for Asuna, so at least something to work with. And Ethan won off the Tour de Force, so maybe... Some ultimates, if nothing else, to muster into the round. Okay. Decent boom bot for information, and Zekin actually falls. Asuna spots his head over the top of drop. It will silence the Razor. Actually, he was on top of the box. So that weapon just out of reach, but a kill no less. And, I mean, leave it to 100 Thieves, right? To find a way. This is their map pick, so I think... In way of maneuverability in these eco rounds they've done their homework nice cross here though back to back wall goes up and aaron look to creep away with death no he's gonna creep forward here he's gonna find bang but that's not the player that you want to find bang so proficient with the sheriff here comes the showstopper but death silence working as the zero point in way of taking away the alt and taking away the player they battle right back Cryo, what do you got for me? Absolutely nothing. It's the lesser scoped rifle in the Marshall to take down the chamber in BCJ. 1v4. What do you say? You hit a clip here. Fault line, two flashes, aftershock, one away from the rolling thunder. So much left. at the ready here for the breach. It's a very tall ass, Mimi. Tough one indeed. At least the utility left to work with. He can stall the plants in the stun. Ooh, he'll actually finish off Ethan. That means Spike is down and time is starting to count on away. But Hiko closes it out. Thrifty round the operator picked up to find it. And to be honest, sure, those were some great shots from the side of 100 Thieves, but uh, those weren't for forced errors. That was Exet over peaking, taking ones yeah. in an anti eco round. Uh, first of all, you, you had Cryo taking uh, a position where he didn't really have a clean out. And sure, it's an op. Sure, you have advantage in that fight, but uh, you're just a little bit better <laughs> on the side of the raise there. Uh, 400 thieves from Asuna. Then they kind of got caught in this fallacy of, hey, we're a man down. This is still an anti-eco. I, I can take a peek. I can be the hero. And none of that happened. It all failed. So now the money working against Exet is they'll try one of these opening gambits. They'll fight forward. And it's second for two. The frenzy into the showstopper all made possible by the utility of BCJ. Absolutely huge. Ethan also going to fall on the opposite side of the map. So 100 Thieves, I mean, they're taking a look in the mirror and saying, what's going on, guys? We had this full buy. We might just give up the Thrifty. There's still two players to fight back for it, but Death of the Guardian proves to be a bit too much, and Cryo retrieves a weapon and sits down the last remaining. It's Thrifty for Thrifty. It puts Exet still two rounds the lead, and I, I was just about to talk about basically what you're getting into right in the unbridled aggression now in this round sure you can just go full send because you're on the thrifty also decisions to be made around this buy because this is one where it's on the edge you could force into this you have alts to work with ethan has a tour de force hiko has an alt but it's a risk you're you could be looking at eight to four deficit here if you force into this and lose the round Here we go for 100 Thieves play. trying to fight for their fifth. Bolt line out. Grab well. Oh, Asuna goes forward and he still finds one. Although the rendezvous came through. Zekin had no way out. Rolling Thunder for Rolling Thunder. Alt for Alt. It's chaos here. Out towards the A side as Asuna continues to push forward. Cosmic Divide to stop the defenders from just spraying through this site. Nine rounds left in the magazine. He's gonna force the reload here. Now look at to play aggressive up towards drop. It's awesome to find the next. He's so shaky, but he's still fragging. Aaron will finally battle back for two. And at the end of the day, things are even. But the spike is planted and 100 Thieves need to hold on. We go rolling thunder for rolling thunder. Pit for pit, player for player. Now do we go round for round? It is X set. Find a third or a second. 
in a row here, I should say. Shots going on through. Aftershock won't quite land either. One flash to play with, but who's getting flashed? The whole side is covered by pits. On the outside goes Bang. And down goes Bang. Ethan, gonna get one with the Headhunter. And that's the defending pit to fall. Bulldog in hand. Hiko will fall. Now it's all up to Ethan. He's got to do it perfectly. And he just might. He just will. It's the Red Bull clutch for Ethan. It's the fifth for 100 Thieves. Huge out of Ethan to pull that one from the precipice of defeat. Even in the death of Hiko on the Viper, the damage dealt by his pit was still enough to allow the Headhunter's body shots Close that one on out. A incredibly scrappy round from both these teams. Rolling thunders from both sides hitting Cryo Cells. He was stuck in no man's land and then talk of no man's land. Well, one was created between those Viper pits and Exit just a little slow to push on through. Could have been anyone's game in that chaos, but crucially, Thunder Thieves swinging in their directions. So now the money, all right, into this final round and a chance for even standings as Exit again will try this aggression. BCJ ready with a flash just on the other side of the nebula. Oh, there's three players here. There's three players dead for 100 Thieves. They try to push inside, and Xset won't allow it. Seven to five, surely. Basically, more than on the table. Seven to five has been digested with those first three kills coming through, and I would love nothing more than Hiko and Asuna to make me eat my words. They have you till to play with. And the spike just in front of them, but five players still on the other side. The 2v5, how doable is this? Sort of force just on the opposite side as well as Cryo can't quite find the angle, but he's watching the spike. Austin up, back turn, shot doesn't land. He goes back to the next and he'll eventually fall. He doesn't swap to the headhunter, the patented Cryo kill. Instead, he goes down. And well, now the round gets a bit more digestible for 100 Thieves. 40 seconds left on the clock, but their position initially noted. There's still a utility over towards the A side of the map to catch anything else off there, except... They'll return to a 2-2 split, but talk of utility, it's up for BCJ as well. He can seconds. deny this plant, he can buy time on these rotations, information already given. Blast pack, to cause some paranoia. Now Asuna can go up onto the ropes, ensure a comfortable spot for the raise. And not this time around, his aftershock will stop another push from happening, and Hiko, Hiko finds himself. And the one before, there's just no time here on the round. He'd have to find everybody right here, right now, and he can't do it. Once more, it's seven to five for Xset at the half. We'll see if they can close the series right after this break. An incredibly scrappy game here between Xset and 100 Thieves as the Thieves now find themselves at a deficit. Last chance rodeo, still an opportunity for them to find their way into playoffs. It would require a massive fight. Come back in this map and a third map win. If it's going to start, it's got to be now, Tanner. It's gonna start, it's got to be now, and I am a believer of the 100 Thieves Fracture Pistol Round. We've seen the strength in it. And a lot of that is off the back end of the aggression from Asuna working hand in hand with Bang, but we don't get any just yet. Zex set. Still players lean out towards the A site. They're still split across the map, so again, still plenty of options. Altorb retrieved for Zek in, lets us know that they want to put a bit more emphasis into getting this show stomper online. And for now, just over a minute left and things are quiet. All quiet for the moment, but soon noise to be made out towards B. First point of contact will be Ethan on this chamber, but he's alone, has to just find information, fall away, one kill, that would be stellar. But is Xset setting up for a fake here? They still have pressure towards the A side or get the show on B. It's a matter of who breaks contact first and towards A, that's the destination. So Ethan's still alone in this. But Sonny will slowly work his way forward on a rotation. And that spike, not overextending just yet. You're seeing Xset. Really waiting for that perfect moment, trying to get Zekin back on board here with the squad. Fault line going to be queued up. This should be sent out towards Tower. Ethan, not going to get tagged by that one coming up the ropes, and it's a shorty up close and personal to teleport to safety, so Ethan will sneak away. He had a classic at his feet, so now can look to battle back in and fight with his team. But the B site, it's been taken, and Cryo makes sure that the defense is a bit weak, and there's no time, though. 12 seconds on the clock. They have to get that spike planted. And Aaron finally will. Now the cross is being held. Is JC Stani going to find the first? The planter can't get out of dodge as Austin goes back to work with the trusty frenzy and he wants some more. The shots through the box. Eventually they'll land to the body of BCJ and Def has to clutch things up. A 1v4. A spike planted for him. But a couple members just in front and it's too many as the pistol round will go the way of 100 Thieves once more. 
nicely done there out of 100 thieves on the retake I, I really like the setup for the retake in that one right you have your Astro on one side to stall time with the gravity well and up towards heaven you have a chamber with the shorty uh, the agent is kind of crazy because you can have basically a sheriff and a shorty and the classic all in the same round and <laughs> yeah. we saw all that get juggled there by ethan take a shot tp away pick up your classic have a headhunter to play off of and also put yourself in a great position to work on that retake Man advantage, well-used utility, and a must-needed, or excuse me, a much-needed round for 100 Thieves. But, good exit, four spy coming on in. The spike has given them a little bit of extra money, so they're willing to take the risk in this one. And this is huge, right? Winning a force like this completely crushes 100 Thieves' economy because they've bought down to zero as well. So they understand how important that round was and how important this one is to tie him up. But Asuna won't allow it. The back is turned and Bang is there. To secure the kill onto death as Aaron fights back for one. BCJ able to steal back the next, and here we go. Things are even across the board. The buys, the frags. Now the site take. Hiko planting his feet. Here's Cryo dropping down, able to find the first over the top of the toxic screen. Is he expecting the next though? No, he's not, but he finds the dink. So Aaron worse for where BCJ matching that same energy in low HP. A 2v2 as the spike gets planted. As Ethan. JC Stani, nice grab well to find the vulnerability. These specters just became showstoppers, it feels Not like, especially on to BCJ. Grab well gonna find the stun of BCJ. You're not long for this world, buddy. The hops around the corner, the bunny hops are good. The four spy, it slips away from X and 100 Thieves. They find a way to tie us up and quite possibly grab the lead. Sure, you get damage there. Sure, you get a spike plant down, but unless you're willing to take the big risk on the Force by Wars, that should give Under Thieves a really good opportunity to swing this early game momentum in towards their favor in the second half of Fracture. Good early aggression for them out towards main, and they relented at the right time, putting it into an advantage. Two versus two, where the Astro Utility proves itself potent in the retake. It will just be the Sheriff investment for the side of X that they do not want to play within the Force by Wars. So. A good early look for 100 Thieves. Their bonus round will not be tested too much whatsoever as there has just been one rifle invested for JC Stone. Trademark dealt with. Orb retrieved. This one going the way of BCJ, so Rolling Thunder. Now the look for Xset wanting to get that one online with upgraded pistols. How much more can they get? Got one rifle here in the hands of JC Stanny. And we hold in this tower position and Ethan up atop the box. Now this box can be crucial. Nice flick there from JC Stanny, but kill created right back. It's another alt door picked up and okay, here we go. You blink and now the aftershock, excuse me, the rolling thunder is online as the ghost goes good for one. The long range battle goes the way of bang and he's only got a specter, but he's making it work. The proficiency doesn't stop at the sheriff here for the breach of 100 thieves. And although an alt online here for BCJ, except don't have a whole lot to work with. I'm going to assume position up in tower. The B site, it's opened up, but the crosses are being held. Ethan with the headhunter. Rendezvous down just in case things get dangerous. Hiko also here. And except they got to make a move with 30, 30 seconds. seconds. Timing on that one. BCJ is forward but spotted. Headhunter takes it down. Spike falls. And so too does Zekin. Another round where Ethan proves himself potent on this chamber. Just the headhunter in hand, and he makes it work. Even the rec rifle recovered on through. So, exit while well, they find that damage. There's no spike plant to come, and now they do get that real anti-bonus round. Full investment to come on through, and under thieves even to risk it just a tad onto the reinvestments. They should still have money into the next either way. Ethan's ultimate being used in this round allows it, but talk of alts, other side. BCJ rolling thunder, get the sight with that. Put down Aaron's Viper's Pit in towards the post plant, and you have a potent chance at around here. Is early on, they will just hold for aggression that is to come. Ethan on a walk up here. He forced to back away, doesn't want to play as aggressively inside the Nebula Smoke as we saw Xset doing on their defensive side. Meanwhile, aggression out towards Arcade, gonna keep Zekin at base to uh, a little too wary of what could come should he push forward and BCJ, making sure that nobody's garnered this space in the sewers with Zekin being forced to back away. So a good start here for 100 Thieves. The next set, respectable. Nice flash, jumping over the top, goes banging. I mean, this Spectre, 
this player just keeps continuing to find value. The desk said it. Uh, they called for answers, or they had questions, and Bangs got all the answers, right? How are you going to perform in game two after game one? And it's perfectly. We go one for one across the map, so no harm, no foul. But this is a big round for Exit. They need to try and find a way to win this one. And the angle is going to be cleared. Rolling Thunder, but Ethan. Rendezvous away. Now it's the fight through the wall and find the kill on to Cryo. What more can he find as that toxic screen should be subsiding here momentarily. And look at the backstab. JC Stani still inside tower and all of the attention is bought out towards this generator side. So once that spike gets planted, Stani can look to make a play. The pit is down. So it's a bit harder to push on through. The wall bank almost closed out the kill on to BCJ. And there it is. Tower unchecked, unsuspected was JC Stani. Now two remain here with the pit down. They have to go huge in the 2v3. Inside the pit, the Viper will thrive. And Aaron to get it done. A tap onto the spike. The body starts to drop. Oh no, not like this. Now Bang has to get it done. The Rolling Thunder queued up here in the 1v1. But instead, he looks to fight forward. Snake bite as he pushes up onto it. The Decay is still coming through. And he's halfway here on the spike. Now running out of time and running out of HP. His counterpart though, the 1v1 right in front of him is so healthy and so aware it's Aaron to tie us up. That 1v1 is so well played from Aaron. It was Zekin to get them to that point, but once he came down to the wire, Aaron realizes that there is that Rolling Thunder in play, so he retreats, falls all the way back to find a place where he would be unlikely to be altered, then just lets the Viper's pit fall. The damage was still done. It, it was late enough into the round that the breach had to be in the pit, so Bang found himself with only one HP to work with and an incredibly disadvantaged situation. That's a massive round for Exet to steal away, especially considering how it started off. Under Thieves had some massive kills on towards the cross, but BCJ, his rocks in getting the spike down allowed it to convert on through. Still, plenty is available for Under Thieves, and they still have some potent ultimates to work with, as Ethan will stand just on the crease of that door and just have an opportunity here against second. Flash will bait him forward. Second spots him. This one a little dangerous, but it's just a dance for now. No damage done by the way. And, oh. Ethan, I mean, put in a tough spot, but refusing to let that door close. Just dancing back and forth. He eats a lot of damage, uses that rendezvous to get away. But at the end of the day, uh, the trade won by Exet in way of damage. As they lean out towards the B site after all that commotion over an A. And it was three players stacked up per 100 Thieves. Now only two here on the B site. And while the showstopper can make sure that those two head for the hills. Second, not... Seemingly not able to find anything as he sends that rocket out towards the dead body of Hiko, courtesy of BCJ. Spike planted also, courtesy of the Breach of Exet. And now 100 Thieves are working against the clock. They've got a player. Low HP. Asuna, Bang, and JC Stani still healthy, but inside the Poison Cloud, no way. Cryo gets sniffed out, taken down. The Decay is there, but the health will come back. The Rolling Thunder. Now to look to slow things down here in the post plant. As Asuna pushes forward with an ult of his own. But up in towers where you gotta go. And that rocket it just goes so scary in the close corners. Fights his exit. They're starting to flood the kill feed red. JC Stani, 3 HP and a dream as one remains. They need to try and find the kills. But it's Asuna to do it instead. Despite the half, despite the full. And 100 Thieves to 9. Everything invested in that round for the side of 100 Thieves, but the gain's massive despite the heavy alt usage. That post plant to be denied. It was the Rolling Thunder initially to push everyone back so far. Then the wall, that cosmic divide just holds the line, and when you're on the right side of it, pretty easy to find these frags. JC Stani went big with his triple, and it just came down to a well positioned one versus one. Now, for the side of Exit, we have to start to think a little bit further on because these post plants have been an issue for them in a few of these rounds. Their composition is strong at them, but Under Thieves looking good and Bang on the Breach has been a big part of that. This man always seeming to find overperformances on this map. I don't even know if overperformance is the right word because at this point it's consistent, right? The, the the power this man is finding when he plays this breach is impressive to say the least. But sort of force gained, it might just be a setup for an A split here. His cryo will go hunting for a frag. And the weapons available, not the best, but when you think about on top of the classic, what Zekin brings to the table, right? The paint shells, the boom bot, blast packs to close the angle, that classic be quite a bit stronger through the force unfortunately death had fallen that's a weapon down so a guardian to be retrieved we'll see whose hands that one finds its way into it's 100 thieves doing a good job they push forward they get the early numbers now they can back away play patient
play passive and make exit come to them. BCJ, one pip away, Rolling Thunder. I don't know if this is the round that we see it unless somebody somewhere, right? Oh unless God. this Tour de Force picks up a couple of quick kills or Aaron's able to find something. I think we hang on to that round seconds left. or that alt into the next. With 30 seconds on the clock, exit. They've got all they could. They've, around the world, give us the orbs. Now it's all about execution. That it is. Raisin ain't queued up here. He goes down below and should get pressured by that, but it's good utility to delay. Rotation's underway in just under 10 seconds on this clock. One for one initially. Finally, that Port of Force finding its mark, but still Hiko, he needs to be dislodged in the time. He's just too far gone. Spike is on the floor. Hiko has done enough. Rights his wrongs. Finds a 3k and his squad 100 thieves up to the double digits. Yeah, a huge anchor there from Hiko. For Exit, obviously that round is a little weird. They do invest... I <laughs> game has been finding himself a really potent anchor, especially in the late round towards the safe site. Uh, Hunter Thieves is playing a rather passive defense this late on in. We saw a couple rounds where they were willing to get aggressive, but for the most part, they don't give a lot of information over for free. It requires that breach utility. Zek and Satchels to be committed if Exit want that early space, want that early momentum, and thus far, they've been failing in that regard, leading to some of these incredibly scrappy late rounds. Is this time it will be a fight for Maine, but elsewhere, Ethan, the second I say they've relented in the aggression, he fights for it. It's a pinch on the north side of the map. What's the reply from Exit? Yeah, I love that. In the timeout, 100 Thieves say, hey guys, maybe we're giving up too many of these alt orbs, right? These guys are alting us quite a lot, so they look to start to fight for it. And while they win the early fight, Zekin falls. The four remaining get up here inside A main. BCJ rolling Thunder online. Going to send that one through Sands, through Rope. But a Viper's pick. Going to make sure that nobody gets onto the site for free without taking some type of damage. And JC Sonny doing the same in way of kills. But they're traded back. At the end of the day, 3v2 is where we find ourselves. Now cut down to the last one. And BCJ gets a little silly on the ropes. He heads up top to his doom. 100 Thieves find 11. Well done there at 100 Thieves. That, that was another one of these big swing rounds. Exit, like you mentioned, they've been farming up the alts quite frequently, and these BCJ rolling thunders have been a critical turn in some of these rounds, but in this one, it's well contained, especially with the fight towards Sands, a good individual performance out of Sani, and just this variability in the aggression has been excellent out of 100T. Fight towards the north side of the map there. Super duper strong. It was only one player completely alone in that regard that Ethan was able to take on down. So now, a uh, change up, more of a default for the side of Exit. As hard as those can be to hold on this map, they'll put more emphasis on this drop control, which I am a fan of. Normally, this team is one who, who is frequently putting pressure in this part of the map. And they do return to that. It's, again, 100 Thieves find an opener for free. Aaron was playing around within his orb and Asna. Just triangulates him, sprays on a way through the smoke, finds the frag. So now this is going to be a forced hit towards this B site. But notice the off angle. Chambers here, it's Ethan up top. This is going to be a tough position to clear. Trademark taken down. Stars to follow. But like you said, the off angle up high. Going to pull the crosshair. Oh, and he sees the headhunter. He knows what's happening. Zekin could go up into towers. The information given on over and stunned up as JC Stani, but he still finds the frag. The sheriff's just not enough here in this round. It's the prime gaming flawless for 100 thieves to push us to map point here on Fracture. Champions are glowing here for the likes of Ethan. He's had a fantastic performance on this map, but I'd like to switch up. Perfect round to try out this off angle. His opponent on a lesser buy does well to isolate the kills with the pressure applied up towards the nest as well. And now that point secured. So exit on their last legs. They're pretty close to some critical alts here, both for Zekin and for Aaron, as well as that uh, the, the, the cosmic divide for a chance at an execute. But generally uh, their executes have had to wait towards the light round. Utility play very potent for 100 Thieves, and again, they're going for this early pressure. Both sides indeed in the stun. It's great, but it's Chamber. Ethan is away. No risk to him. Meanwhile, you've got Cryo and Def hunting. They're trying to spot the tracks of the defenders out towards the A site. So still not full committing. Once more, it's the around the world. For the ultimates to see what they can get online. Aaron close to the Viper's Pit. We have the Cosmic Divide. We have Aggression. Okay, there's the Viper's Pit. It's low HP. Sure on the Viper. 10 HP is not really where you want to be. It just means you need to tuck yourself a bit more should that pit come down. With that kill out towards B site, Exeter expecting 100 Thieves to rotate. Instead, they've kept the same three this way. And maybe I spoke too soon as they do look to break this formation and head back towards that B site. And the closing of the door, that will be hard. 
either side of Axis, they can maybe assume that something is up, some kind of rotation towards the other side of the map. It's just Hiko here, and judging by his positioning, he'll likely have to concede. As we divide soon to come on down, what's Hiko's decision? Does he fight? Molly forward at least. He wants one. Grab well, gonna pull him back in though and make him, oh, no, okay. I thought they were making the decision for him. Hey, play safe on the other side of the wall. Instead, he's vulnerable, he pushes forward. It's not a timely push. Hiko falls and Excess still in this one. Looking to find their ninth after shot queued up once that door opens. Flank is answered by Bang as Aaron was looking. Try and make sure that nobody could come this way. So full crunch here. 100 Thieves BCJ Aftershock goes from door. Now back into the spawn. Just trying to buy time. And they're doing so perfectly. Only two remain. It's the two on the flank. And so much has been thrown this way. So many bodies. So much utility. And I don't know what Bang and JC Stani have for it. They run out of time. You hear the spike ticking. They still have four players to worry about. Containment now the name of the game. One body drops. Xset looking to close out the round, and that they do. They find their ninth, and they do it near flawlessly. Really good adaptation once the spike was down. We've seen Xset kind of struggle with stagnation in some of these post plants, but in this round, upon realization of the flank, they, they know that they have to make a play, and, well, that play is to fight on forward. Take spacing towards spawn. Isolate a duel in that three versus one, and even earlier, as we see in the replay here, Great setup. I, I mean, Death on the Astra, it feels like he's good on any map. You can play on Breeze, Ascent, here on Fracture. Even the maps where people don't expect Astra to be as successful, Death finds that success as he was the man to get things started in the right direction. Three rounds now separate Exit from Overtime. A distinct possibility is these will put out the stun, but this time, no Asuna to follow it up. And the Nebula Smoke, just getting disrespected, so kind of a bluff. From 100 Thieves to try and keep Xset at bay. Zekin to push on through. Now they can reclaim this space. Viper wall out towards the B site. It's one that we've seen basically the entire half for Xset on their attacking side. And it's that same trio out towards A for 100 Thieves. We'll see what or if Xset can find something to draw that rotation once more. Jump peek from Cryo. Just nothing to be had on the opposite side. Trademark to make sure nobody puts aggressively. And Xset. Still looking for their openings, but they're seemingly leaning on this ace side. You got four players out before the dish. You got one player inside main and Cryo is caught out by the flash. Three player swing. Asuna takes him down, nets the kill. And well, the four are on the opposite side. They're gonna come out from drop. Ooh, okay. Zekin can go forward. Able to find a kill. Nice. Showstopper there, but one right in response as Asuna goes sky high and BCJ will fall as well. The spike is down. Somebody's gotta jump on to retrieve and they're forced to use the Viper's pit in order to do so. Def, you talked about him. He's good on just about every map when he plays the Viper, but can he be good in a 1v3 with 36 HP or 100 Thieves? Have they done enough to get us to map three? And yes, they have, as Asuna will close us out 13 to 9.